Tonight on Huckabee, Texas Congressman Pat Fallon, Just the News founder John Solomon, TBN show host Sheila Walsh, gospel and bluegrass singer Becky Isaacs Bowman. That's Trey Corley and the Music City Connection. And I'm your announcer, Keith Bilbrey. And now, here's Mike Huckabee! Wow. Great crowd here tonight. Thank you for being with us. I know that we are a very long way from any votes in the 2024 presidential race. The early primaries don't begin until early next year, over six months away, and the first debate for the Republican candidates isn't even until August. But that doesn't stop nonstop polls and speculation as to who is leading and who's going to win. And frankly, any of the predictions or polls at this point just don't mean much. It's like trying to determine how good a cake is going to be when you're just sampling some of the raw ingredients of the recipe before you even measure and mix and cook. I mean, I doubt you would base your view of a chocolate cake on the taste of raw flour, a raw egg, a stick of butter, or dry cocoa powder, right? But more important than who has great poll numbers right now is who has a message that excites people, that give voters a hope of a candidate who cares about people like them, and who can stand and deliver when it comes to policies that makes our families safer and more secure, and who can stand up to the bullies of the world and those in our own country and fight back on behalf of the rest of us. Now, having been a participant, or shall I say a victim, of two presidential races, and I've also run five marathons, believe it or not, I can tell you that running for president is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And the issues that start out being the most important may not even be the most urgent by election time. Now, for me, I care deeply that we elect someone who will fearlessly seek to dismantle the deep state operatives who have turned our government into a vicious weapon designed to destroy anyone who dares to question big government or its institutions or its collaborative work with big business or the monolithic media that only sees what makes the far left look good. Frankly, I'm less concerned about how old the candidate is than I am about if the candidate has the mental capacity to fight for us and the physical stamina to endure the rigors of the campaign and being able to serve should he or she be elected. And to that end, I do have some doubts that Joe Biden is up to the task. And here's why. This past week, he uttered some bizarre gibberish during an event to push for gun control that was not only completely disconnected to the event, but disconnected to reality. Watch. All right. God save the queen, man. Huh. What's a gun control rally there? God save the queen, man. Where'd that come from? I mean, the queen is dead. Sorry, but she is. So it's too late to save her unless Joe is talking about Queen Latifah <laughs> or maybe the British rock band Queen. I don't know. It just didn't make any sense. And then after that, he again had to be let off the stage because he seemed confused whether the event was even over. But beyond his incoherent ramblings, his policies ought to scare us even more. His Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, made a trip to China this week. I hope it wasn't to renew Hunter and Joe's business deals with the Communist Chinese Party, I hope. But in what surely was a deliberate statement, he said that the independence of Taiwan was no longer U.S. policy. Now, that was like a nuclear device being set off. For decades, we have openly spoken and showed our support for the tiny island of the Republic of China, otherwise known as Taiwan, which is an economic power and an ally for freedom and democracy, as opposed to the so-called People's Republic of China, 
which is anything but a country belonging to the people, and it is most certainly not a republic. Even Democrat Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan to show her support, as, as now Speaker Kevin McCarthy. And by the way, I publicly praised both of them, both of them, for standing with a true friend, because they should have. We have remained one of the few and only real friends that Taiwan had, and now the Biden administration seems to be determined to betray our friends in order to cut a deal with our enemies. Now, is it because Joe is compromised on the issue of China due to the shady business deals that he's partnered with his son Hunter with the Communist Chinese Party? You know, Barack Obama was right when he said elections have consequences. They sure do. And it's why every American had better plan on voting to give us some different consequences than those that we're getting under this current administration with open borders, higher taxes, runaway inflation, reckless spending, and energy dependence on foreign oil, and his family deals with the devil. The polls right now may not matter that much, but the election polls matter. They really do matter. Texas Congressman Pat Fallon serves on some of the top committees in the U.S. Congress and says most Americans would be spending years in prison for what Hunter Biden's been charged with. And said he gets a slap on the wrist because his dad is Joe Biden. But don't let this distract you from the substantial evidence of the influence peddling scheme that the GOP Oversight Committee will continue to pursue. Please welcome back to the show, Congressman Pat Fallon. I think we got a lot to talk about, but I want to jump right into um, you guys on the oversight committee have now seen the 1023 yes. forms that the FBI had. What is it that we need to know that you've looked at and that you can tell us? Sure. Well, it's not a classified document. And when I went into the SCIF, which is, you know, a secure lo location where you read these kinds yeah. of sensitive documents, uh, the FBI was all around us. They wouldn't allow us to take notes, never mind take pictures. Hmm. So I read the document over four times slowly for an hour to try and retain as much as possible. <laughs> My mom would be proud. Yeah. And as soon as I left the skiff, I had a notebook and a pen, and I wrote it all down with an FBI agent scouring over me like this. Does he even understand that he works for you and not the other way around? I just wondered if that's... On the Oversight Committee, it's our job to make sure they're doing their job. That's what oversight means, isn't it? Governor, I was so disheartened when I read the document because it was just like naked corruption. Yeah. So we have to understand, we have to explain who the person was that the, the FBI informant, uh, the FBI said, highly credible, reliable, somebody they've been working with for 10 years. All the information has always checked out with this person and they've paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Yeah. He said he's talking directly to uh, uh, f uh, the CEO of Burisma, an oligarch, and the oligarch tells him, I want to break into the American energy sector. How do I do that? And he said, well, you got to, you're under investigation for corruption. you got to get that scored away here in Ukraine. He goes, no, no, no. Do you know who's on my board? I imagine he would say, yeah, Hunter Biden, you know, something like that. And it, he said, because he's going to make it all go away. Him and Joe Biden are going to make it go away. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, well, this is the, the oligarch. Yeah. Well, Hunter's not smart, but he's got a powerful father. Mm -hmm. And he said, I've been paying him 50 grand a month, and I paid each of them $5 million. And then the guy says, don't get involved with these people. You're insane. He goes, no, I've got protection. I've got recordings of me and Hunter talking and me and Joe. Okay, if that exists, we're talking about yeah. impeachment, you know, a removal right. from office kind of thing. And, and, and he said, and I also paid them $10 million in a very complex way that would take the Americans 10 years to unravel, but I have the cipher. And he mm -hmm. also referred to him, get ready, he referred to Joe Biden as the big guy. So did a bunch of American whistleblowers that don't know this oligarch in Ukraine. And so did former business partners of Hunter, like Tony Bobolinsky. Yes. We don't know if it's absolutely true. I'm going to be fair. You know, it hasn't been proven. Uh, this is an allegation at this point, but it does come from, as you mentioned, a very credible source. We paid him hundreds of thousands of dollars over a long period of time, so we must believe that he's pretty He's got decent. a track record of being honest. So yeah. this isn't necessarily a smoking gun, but I'm smelling the gunpowder. Okay. And that's what's yeah. so scary. And then uh, Jamie Raskin, who's a ranking member of the Democrat from Maryland on oversight, lied to the American people when he said that he started mentioning Rudy Giuliani in context with the FD-1023. Yeah, 10 I saw that. Rudy Giuliani has nothing to do with this. Number one, I guess it was an attempt, a vain attempt to discredit it. 
But, and then secondly, he said that Bill Barr, after reading the 1023, ended the investigation. That's exactly the opposite. Bill Barr said, no, that's not true. I referred it to the U.S. attorney in Delaware, then he referred it to FBI agents. But what they didn't tell us was the FBI, an analyst with the FBI, put it in a restricted subfile, which only could be accessed by the FBI agents that directly talked to the source, which meant 99.9% .9 of the FBI agents didn't have access to it, which meant the people that were investigating it didn't know it existed. That is deep state stuff. That is really deep state. If this oligarch shares with us either and or the, 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 the paper trail of the payments or the recordings, we're yeah. talking about the greatest scandal in American political history. Yep. We're talking about impeachment, conviction, and removal. And that's horrible for the country. It's not good for the country. As you, as you know, I, I know that you're a patriot. I, when I was reading this document, I felt my heart sank. I felt nauseous. I wasn't taking any clear joy from this. Yeah. We're simply going where the evidence leads us. We're not trying to get to anybody. We're trying to get to justice. Yeah. And that's the difference between what the Democrats did to Donald Trump and what we're trying to find out now. Will Democrats ever come to the place where they will have to say, you know, forget the party stuff. This, this is for the country. It's either right or it's wrong. You're right. It should be country first. You know, like with the military, I don't want yeah. our military politicized. I don't want Ameri I, I don't want Democratic generals or Republican generals. I want American generals. Yeah. And so, the, the, thank you. Absolutely. And you know why that line got applause? Because we're in Tennessee, and there's a lot of great <laughs> American patriots. Yes, there are. There are some great patriots here, for sure. So I, I think when we find out more, uh, and, and we have found out more now, if we didn't have subpoena power. If the Republicans weren't in the majority in the House and we didn't have the authority to hold the FBI director in contempt of Congress, we would never known about any of this. Yeah. If I'd been on your show four months ago, I'd have looked you in the eye and said, I can prove $1 million of, a lit of, of payments from four nationals to the Biden family. Now I can look you in the eye and say, I can prove $10 million and I believe $20 million. We think it's as high as $50 million. Where does it end? And it's only because Jamie, uh, uh, James Comer, call him Jamie, the, the chairman of the Oversight Committee, yeah. has done an excellent job. The staff has as well. And because we've subpoenaed only a few bank records of known Biden associates. Imagine when we subpoena their records. And the reason we haven't is they've already lawyered up and they're going to drag it out past November of 2024. Of course. So uh, Chairman Comer was very clever with a little Napoleonic end around like an Austerlitz or something. Took him by surprise and we found a lot of information. We're going to continue our conversation with uh, Pat Fallon. Don't go away because we have a whole lot more to dig into. Get your shovels ready because we're going to do some digging. We'll be right back. Yeah. Still to come, comedian Rich Natoli will leave you rolling in laughter. And later, Becky Isaacs Bowman performs a song from her new gospel album. That's all ahead on Huckabee. Go to MikeHuckabee.com and sign up for his free newsletter and follow at GovMikeHuckabee on Twitter. Welcome back. We are visiting with Congressman Pat Fallon of Texas. And, you know, when we're getting into this stuff, uh, it, it's, it's disturbing. This week, John Durham went before Capitol Hill. He got grilled pretty hard by both Democrats and Republicans. He didn't get off easy. Uh, but some of the attacks on him, I, I thought, were rather stunning. And the worst was Memphis Congressman Steve Cohen, who may be one of the most vile people that ever got elected to anything. Um, Durham gave it to him in... in pretty good form back. But the whole issue was John Durham mm -hmm. fully investigated all of the Russia stuff and came to the conclusion there was no collusion. There just wasn't. There was nothing other than Democrats paid for a phony dossier. Mm -hmm. The FBI took the bait. They had to know it was phony at some point, and they continued running with it. We spent $37 million on the Mueller investigation. That's taxpayer money down yep. the toilet. Uh, all to, to to dig for something that wasn't there. Now we've got something that you guys are looking at. And, and again, we it's not proven yet, but boy, there's some substance there, and it's not from uh, 
you know, somebody over at the RNC just right. passing out something that they ran on the copy machine. So where does this go, Pat? Well, Governor, the most important question we have to ask is, is the FBI a law enforcement agency that's committed to justice or are they an investigative arm of the Democratic National Committee? Yeah. Because they've proven in 2016, thank you, that... And, and I think that it, it's sad because there's so many rank and file FBI agents. Great they're guys. Doing great. Great they guys. They love their job. Help. They love their country. They're patriots. They're honest. And, and, and they're getting painted with the brush of that the whole organization is corrupt. Yeah, that's the political operatives at the top. Yeah. I mean, and, and they, they, I think they're disheartened and I think the morale is low too because they proved in 2016 the FBI that they took the bait. So let's be really clear about the, what the Steele dossier was because the press doesn't like to report it so the American yeah. people know the truth. Hillary Clinton campaign paid $175,000. The DNC made up the difference. They the payments were a total of $1,065,000. And on their federal disclosures, what did they report that as? Legal services. That was a lie. They both got found civilly uh, liable for it. Hillary... Slap on the wrist, seven yeah. grand fine. Donald Trump's looking at 400 years in jail for having some boxes secure that he could have the power to declassify. And then the RNC, or the, sorry, the DNC got a, a fine of $100,000. It was an act, it was a work of fiction. We know that to be true now, but the press ran with it. So why aren't they reporting uh, well, our, our investigation? Because it's gonna hurt a Democratic president. And that's a two-tier justice system. And it also shows and exposes the, the left um, you know, in the, in the, the press for the bias that they have. You know, when I'm thinking about this week, we had the uh, rather stunning uh, issue with Hunter Biden. He gets a couple of misdemeanor charges <laughs> for cheating on his taxes. We're talking about over $2 million of income he didn't pay taxes on. Yeah. I, I'm thinking, let me think, if, if I made a fraction of that money and paid no taxes on it, I doubt they'd say, nah, no big whoop. Let oh, it go. I, the people out there. If you were making a million and a half dollars two years running and you pay no federal income tax, do you think you would get probation? No. Ask Wesley Snipes, the actor. He went to prison, for heaven's sakes, for less money than that. Yeah, he went to, he went to jail for three years. What incentive do we have as Americans to pay our taxes if we know that we're just going to get probation when we get caught, if we ever do get caught? I've told my accountant I've got a new idea. I'm not paying taxes anymore. <laughs> and when the IRS comes, I'll just identify as Hunter Biden, and I'm done. <laughs> there you go. Easy peasy. I mean, they, they accused President Trump's son of, of treason. And I remember talking to him once, and he looked him in the eye, and you could feel the pain in a father's heart. He said, yeah. you know, Pat, you know what the, 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 grave, the gravest penalty for treason is? Death. Yeah. That's what they were lying about my son. And then we have Hunter Biden, who by all accounts has been a derelict and a failure as a human being until his dad was elected to the vice presidency. And I, it brings me no joy to say that either. It's just the truth. Yeah. But even the gun charge, Brett Tolman, a former U.S. attorney that believes in criminal justice reform, said for that charge... You get four years in prison. So when you total it all up, it should be probably 12 years maximum penalty, but he probably should get somewhere between three and six years. So I hope uh, Judge Narika uh, doesn't take the plea and gives him some prison time because that's just justice. Yeah. It ought to be the same for anybody, whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether your last name uh, gets you into places or whether it means nothing. It ought to be the same and it's not. Governor, are you Congressman, saying equal protection under the yes, law? Yes, I, I think it's oh. a grand idea. It's okay. called America. It's yeah, what amen. we used to have, believe in. It's great having you Thank back. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. For our audience, you can follow Congressman Pat Fallon on social media. Links to do that are up at Huckabee.tv. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to tell our viewers what's coming up next. Coming up, award-winning investigative journalist John Solomon is next. Don't go bye-bye-bye. Huckabee will be back after this. Welcome back, everybody. You know, there's one great thing about doing this show, and that's the incredible music that we get treated to every single show. 
by Trey Corley and the Music City Connection. Let's give them a hand. John Solomon is an award-winning investigative journalist. He's the founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief of Just the News. He's got decades of experience at some of the most prestigious news outlets in the world and continues his role as one of the country's most impactful investigative reporters. So glad to have him here, a great friend. Welcome to the show for the first time, John Solomon. Yeah. Good to be John. Good to be with Welcome. you, Governor. Thank you so much. You know, you practice old school journalism. You don't yeah. approach it with the sense that you've got it all figured out. You dig, you look, uh, you report facts. Sometimes they don't look good for Republicans and you yeah. report that. Sometimes it doesn't look good for Democrats and you report that. Yeah. You're kind of alone out there. It's a lonely time in journalism if you're interested in finding the facts and then writing the story, because today too many of my colleagues decide the story and then try to shoehorn the facts into it. And that's why the American public has lost so much trust in the traditional institutions of news. And that's a tragedy. We it need is. the media. Yeah. We need them to be honest, though. Yes, we do. You used to be at the Washington Post. I did, yes. Uh, what's happened at the Washington Post? It's, it's uh, you know, I, I saw the other day my former boss, the former executive editor of the Washington Times, he goes all the way back to the Watergate days, he's in the movie, yeah. bend down and he said, we have to stop worrying about objectivity and neutrality. We gotta start imposing a moral uh, uh, edict. And I thought, well, wait, how could the guy I work for say that? Uh, we don't, we're not in the job of making people's minds up. Our job is to give people facts and let them make their minds up. There's an elitist group in charge of the news industry today, and they believe their job is they're smarter than the American people. We're going to make their minds up for them, and that's where they lost their audience from. John, I saw something today, Corrine Jean-Pierre getting hammered at the White House, yeah. as was John Kirby. And there were reporters that were actually doing their job. And yes. these weren't Fox News reporters. These no. were, you know, people from all over the spectrum of the news industry. And they were asking hard questions. They were, and they were getting stonewalled. Yep. And you could tell they were getting frustrated. They are. Are we getting a, to a breaking point where the media is going to say, say, wait a minute, we've been lied to? I think that's exactly what's happened. Listen, for a while after I wrote the original Hunter Biden stories, 2019, I got... Uh, portrayed. I, I'd done all this award-winning work in major institutions for years. I was a conspiracy theorist for a couple of years. But the last six months, I've had all of my colleagues in major news organizations come to me and say, hey, we got this wrong. Tell us where we went wrong. Tell us where we can find things. I've been working with major news organizations, partnering with Justin News to get that out. I think they realize they bit into a really bad uh, bait and they got taken around for a long time and they know they misled the American public. They don't want to say it, yeah. but they know in their heart of hearts they did. I'm beginning to see journalism resemble a little bit of what it used to look like 20, 30 years ago when I got in the profession. It's a glimmer of hope, and I, yeah. hope, it, I hope it starts yeah. happening. It has to. John, you were given unfettered access by Speaker McCarthy yes. to all of the video that was taken, all yes. of the security video, everything yes. that happened on January 6th. Uh, I, I know it's probably a task that'll take months it will. to look through it. Is there anything that you have seen that already makes you think we haven't been given the full story. Oh, yes, absolutely. We're going to learn so much about January 6th. There was a preconceived narrative, and the media, once again, had the narrative and tried to fit the facts in it. The facts are way more complicated. The story is way more nuanced. There were people who did bad things. There are also people who didn't do very much wrong at all, but are getting punished like they were, you know, major felons. And what you're seeing now is that there's a discussion that they're going to change the perimeter of the of the Capitol and charge people that were on the outside like they had gone into the Capitol. There is a mindset in the Justice Department FBI. We saw it all through the Trump years, but it's now yeah. that if you're any way associated with Donald Trump, you're going to get treated differently. A lot of people think this is a red-blue thing. It isn't. Alan Dershowitz said this uh, to me the other day, and it really smacked me. It's true. Yeah. He said there is a difference between anyone associated with Trump and the rest of the world in the justice system right now. We have to fix that. Justice has to be blind. The person you're prosecuting, their Face, their name shouldn't matter, and certainly their politics shouldn't matter. That is not the case right now in the Justice Department. It's not. And you know, Alan Dershowitz is a self-described liberal. He yeah. never voted, voted for, for Joe Biden. Yeah. Voted for Joe Biden. Yeah. Would never vote for any Republican. No. I've known Alan many years. Yep. He's a brilliant legal scholar, but he's yes. also an unapologetic, uh, you know, legitimate liberal who really believes his stuff. And I, I admire him because he, he's fair when it comes to the law. He is. I want you to tell us about this book you just come up with, Hidden yes. Headlines, A Seymour Clues Mystery. So you're writing books now for children. I never thought this would be something I would do. I'm so grateful for the opportunity that Brave Books gave me. This book has two interesting origins. One is a funny, humiliating experience for me. 
my son, who's autistic, got a hamster a few years ago. Mm. And his mom, uh, and uh, he went down a trip to go visit grandma and grandpa, and I was left in charge of the hamster. And I was given one rule, feed it, don't lose it. That's all I was told to do. <laughs> I must have fed it and left the gate just a little open, and this hamster got out. And I spent to 2 o'clock in the morning on my hands and knees with a stethoscope finding chunk. And I found him in an air-conditioned vent. I got him back into the camp. <laughs> And I thought, ooh, I dodged a bullet. My wife will never know. The next day, my co-host on television, Amanda Head, yeah. told the world. My wife found out that I lost the hamster. And so Chunk started trending on social media. <laughs> we wanted to teach, to give parents and grandparents an opportunity to tell them something that schools aren't teaching their children anymore. Schools are not teaching children that free speech matters. In fact, yeah. some students and young adults that I've been bringing into my own newsroom said, you know, I was taught that censorship could be okay in some circumstances. Hmm. It's anathema to the American experience. I wanted to give parents a story that they can tell their children, free speech matters. And so it's a very simple story. Chunk is a newspaper uh, publisher, sort of like what I do. And he has a newspaper and he wants to get it out because there's about to be a flood. He wants to warn his community. And a, uh, a mean koala bear named Carl, uh, yes, he is modeled after Karl Marx. He cogs up all of the tubes in the hamster village and they can't get the newspaper out. And then this uh, detective dog comes along and solves the mystery and they're able to save the community before the flood comes. And it's a very simplistic way of really telling children it does matter. And uh, in the very first day that we launched the book, I went to Philadelphia, the land of liberty, where mm. this great country was born. I was with Kirk Cameron and all the children were sitting around. We were reading to them and you could see they grasped it right away. They were way ahead of me. I thought, oh, they're going to take about eight or 10 yeah. pages. Of they figured it out right away. We have to give our children alternatives to scholastic books and all of this woke ideology. So what Brave Books has done is given people like me a chance to you know, share one little bit of that I'm great almost, American experience. I'm almost glad that you lost your son's hamster because now we get this wonderful book. Well, now he has an agent too. My hamster children. has an agent. Who there knows? you so, go. Yeah. That's what we want. <laughs> Well, John, I want to tell you, you're one of my very favorite people. Thank I you, love sir. what you are doing because it's legitimate, honest journalism. Thank you, sir. And for our audience, John's book, Hidden Headlines, is available now. You can head over to Huckabee.tv. We'll tell you how to get your own copy for your children, your grandchildren, or, hey, for yourself. John Solomon, everybody. Keith, what do we got coming up next? Well, after the break, Rich Natoli will have you in stitches. It's just ahead on Huckabee. TV and get your very own Made in the USA Huckabee mugs, t-shirts, and more. Whenever my next guest performs, hundreds of celebrities show up, and they're all him. His amazing comic impressions have made him a popular name at comedy clubs, corporate events, and in Las Vegas. You can also see him in a great new Christian film called Faith Wins. Would you please welcome the very funny Rich Natoli. Geez, I'm sorry to bother you. My name is Colombo. You know, my wife and I sat down the other night. We were talking about all the craziness today. I, I put together a little list I'd like to share with you. These are the top five shortest books of 2023, right here. Number five, Smart Marketing Advice by Bud Light and Target. <laughs> Number four, Why You Should Have a Baby in Your 80s by Robert De Niro and Al Pacino. <laughs> Number three, Favorite Hiding Places by Joe Biden. <laughs> Number two, Reasons We Would Not Want to See Elon Musk Fight Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> And the number one shortest book of 2023, I'm sorry to bother you, The Woke Book of Wisdom. Thank you very much. I love our national anthem. You know, I'd like to do for you right now a very special version. This is every United States president from John F. Kennedy all the way up to the present, current president, each doing a bit of our anthem. 
Oh, I uh, say, can you see by the uh, dawn's early light in what so proudly we hail? Hail the twilight's last gleamer, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. <laughs> and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the home of the brave. God bless America, and let's make America great again. Come on, man! <laughs> hey, guys, are <laughs> I'd like to do for you, I'd like to do for you some of my favorite comedians. On the count of three, everybody give me a here's Johnny. We'll bring back Johnny Carson. Ready? One, two, three. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like to start off by saying that uh, Doc Head and I did, did the Tonight Show for some 30 plus years. That's right, and we would travel this great country of ours. Uh, I remember one January, Doc Head and I went, went to Washington, D.C. Uh, I couldn't help but notice it was so cold. Funny you should ask. It was so cold in Washington, D.C., I, I swear I saw a politician with his hands in his own pockets. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Jay Leno did The Tonight Show for like 22 years. Here's Jay Leno for you. Well, there's something that was in the paper. Did you read this in the paper, anybody? Um, well, uh, apparently Kamala Harris is taking a trip to Egypt. Did you hear about this? Kamala's going to Egypt. And the press asked her why she wanted to go to Egypt. She said she wanted to go to Egypt because she's never been to South America before. <laughs> right now, uh, I was watching The Wizard of Oz, you know, about a week ago, and I'm thinking, we got to update The Wizard of Oz, put some current celebrities in there. I'd like to do for you right now, my version of The Wizard of Oz stars Robert De Niro as the Scarecrow, <laughs> Joe Pesci as the Tin Man, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man as the Lion, playing a part of Dorothy will be Mike Tyson. <laughs> and the wizard will be played by Donald Trump. <laughs> and now, The Wizard of Oz. That's right, it's me, the great, the powerful, the amazing, the man who's gonna make America great again. <laughs> Trump of Oz, come up and speak. Well, basically, uh, Mr. Wizard, it's uh, me, Dorothy, the small, the meek, and the tattooed. <laughs> I have a couple of requests. First of all, I would like an ear for Evander Holyfield. <laughs> Take your time, folks. For myself, some financial planning courses. Okay, okay, I say we whack him. I say I take this ax and we whack the wizard right in his big mouth, okay, okay, okay? Whack him right in his big mouth, okay, okay? I know that he's in there and that he's all alone. <laughs> now, now, are you talking to me, huh? I told you before, nobody whacks the wizard. I don't have a brain and I know that. Isn't that right, Lion? Well, nobody whacks a wizard. Definitely not the wizard. Where's it gonna take me to Kmart? Where's it gonna buy me underwear? Let me watch Judge Wapner, Judge Wapner. All right, I have heard your requests. If you want your wishes granted, you must bring me the broomstick of Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much. Oh, Rich, that was fantastic. <laughs> We're so glad to have you and all your friends. Oh, thank you. That's <laughs> thank pretty you so cool. much. My pleasure. You know, the neat thing about inviting you, we get like 25, 30 <laughs> celebrities to come with you. Thank you for being oh, here. Oh, my, my pleasure. You know who my idol is. You know, my mentor, a good friend of mine, Rich Little. Who we, we love, love Rich Little. And he's been on this show four times. Uh, we love and, him. And he's a great friend of mine, and I love him so what much. What a great guy. 
Yes, as are you. Thank you so much. Hey, when you visit Las Vegas, be sure to catch Rich Natoli's great show, Voices of a Generation. And you can also keep up with him online. You can book him for your event in your own hometown and learn about his new movie that I can't wait to see called Faith Wins. All of those connections are through Huckabee.tv. Go there and we'll put you in touch with all of what Rich is doing. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to do his amazing impression of an announcer <laughs> and tell us what's still coming up on the show. Well, stick around because the one and only Sheila Walsh joins Mike at the desk next. Later, Becky Isaac's moment will inspire you with a brand new song that's coming up on Huckabee. Samaritan's Purse continues to live out their mission to help the hurting and bring the love and hope of Jesus Christ to a world in need. That wouldn't be possible without your prayers and your support. If you've been looking for a place to give and make a difference, I can encourage you, visit the Samaritan's Purse website or call them today and join the life-saving work that Samaritan's Purse continues to do and you can help them be the hands and feet of Christ to a lost and dying world. Thank you for caring and God bless. Well, you may know my next guest from her Grammy-nominated music, her best-selling books, and as the co-host of Praise and Better Together right here on TBN. She's got a brand new TBN series called My First Trip to Israel with Sheila Walsh. It starts Wednesday, June the 28th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, so mark your calendars. It's a real pleasure for us to welcome Sheila Walsh. Give her a big welcome, please. <laughs> This is going to be an exciting series. I, I'm just surprised you'd never been to Israel before you went for this series. No, I mean, I'm from Scotland originally. Yeah. But I live in Dallas, and I've been to almost every other country in the world, but I'd never been to Israel. I find that hard to believe. This summer marks my 50th anniversary of my first trip to Israel when oh, I was wow. a teenager. I've probably been over 100 times. I've been taking people there since 1981. And when I heard that this was the first time, I thought... Wow. Yeah. But isn't it the most incredible experience in the world? To set your feet and know that you're walking where Jesus walked. Yeah. And I think perhaps some of the quietest places were the most significant. Yeah. Sitting by the sea. Of, we took a little boat out on the Sea of Galilee. And when you're there and you know that, that Jesus was there, it's yeah. just, it's powerful. Speaking of walking around Israel, I understand that when you first got there, you didn't think a lot about where you were. And we've got a little clip that I oh want to dear. show. This is Sheila Walsh figuring out that maybe Israel is not the easiest place to walk in high heels. Watch. Sheila, I think the number one order of business yeah. is getting you a better pair of shoes for the city. Absolutely. And there's we... right the place for oh, you over here. Perfect. Hey, stupid person needs better shoes. No, no, not stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, I might go with with these. That color fits perfectly with your outfit. <laughs> okay, I'm about five inches shorter, but way more comfortable. Okay. These are great. <laughs> so, he did you a big favor, did he not? Yes, he did. But the shoes I ended up with, they're those pointy shoes. I looked like a Scottish Aladdin. <laughs> it was tragic. But I have a little piece of insider information about you oh. and all your trips to Israel. What you take you, you only take carry on luggage? Yes, right. How do you do that? You don't carry stuff you don't need. My wife and I, when we travel and we go to Israel for 10 days, we do carry on only. We never check a bag. We never lose luggage because <laughs> it's with us the whole time. It can be done. That's impressive. Well, it's 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 really a better way to go. I mean, it is totally people take too much stuff. Yeah. But the thing you took with you, I think, was a level of curiosity that we're gonna get to see in the series, 10-part series. Was there a special place where, as Forrest Gump so brilliantly said, and God showed up? Did you have that moment? <laughs> I had quite a few of those moments, but honestly, it was on the last day as I'm standing on at the top of the Mount of Olives, and I'm looking down the Kidron Valley, and there's Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and there's the city, 
And I remember how Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they didn't understand the time of their visitation. And then I remembered that this is where Christ will return, that he will stand on the Mount mm -hmm. of Olives. Zechariah tells us that it will split. Yeah. And it just gave me this hunger for those who've never been. In fact, we're going back in November. We're going to take a TBN tour, November 20th through 30th. And I just want people who've never been, come with us. Yes. My joy now is watching Israel through the eyes of people who are there for the first time. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're going to get to do in your series. I we're going to get wait. to see it through your eyes as you're seeing it for the first time. But it's already evident. It won't be your last time. And no. that's the way it happens. People go, they yeah. want to keep going back. Looking forward to it. If you want to learn more about Sheila's projects by visiting Huckabee.tv, we will connect you. And be sure to tune in to TBN Wednesday nights at 9.30 Eastern starting June the 28th for my first trip to Israel with Sheila Walsh. Right now, Keith Bilbrey is going to tell us where this show is headed to next. We'll stay right where you are after the break. An unforgettable performance by gospel singer-songwriter Becky Isaacs Bowman. You're watching Huckabee. Virginia Congressman Ben Klein joins Governor at the desk, and talented grandkids of Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn perform a classic country song. Becky Isaacs Bowman is having quite a year. As the guitar player in the award-winning family band, The Isaacs, she just got off the road opening for Reba. You've heard of her. Not many people get to only use one name. You got to be pretty big, and Reba's got it. Well, just a few months prior, though, she was in a head on vehicle collision that left her unable to walk and on a long road to recovery. Leaning on the Lord, she has used her strength in Christ to record an album titled Songs That Pull Me Through the Tough Times. Please welcome one of our very favorites, Becky Isaacs Bozeman. <laughs> Becky, great to have you here. Thank you. It's a miracle you are sitting there. It sure is. I'm so thankful for God's blessings, for getting to be here, having a second chance at life. And um, it, it's been quite an interesting journey this far. When I first heard about the accident and word spread quickly, uh, in, in those early hours and days, mm -hmm. Nobody was sure you were going to pull through. Yeah, and I appreciate the phone call, Governor. It meant so much to me. It was so encouraging. The, the Christian community, the music community, our friends, the, the churches, they pulled together. And, you know, I always like to say in 2020, we lose heart of, of how the world has been. Yeah. But the body of Christ is alive and well, and I lived mm. to see it. Um, flowers and calls and and. Prayers. I've never been in a place in my life where I can say I felt the prayers until that happened. And it was the lowest of lows and the highest of highs. And I found that the same God that's the God on the mountain is the same God in that dry, lonely wilderness season that, that I experienced. But I'm on the road to recovery and I'm thankful. You know, we're thankful for not only your recovery, but I'm thankful this album that you have put out. I mean, this is uh, an incredible, but it's a deeply personal project. This is not just music. This is message. Yes. This is Becky telling us her story from the heart. And I'd like to blame it all on Kelly Back. Yeah. Over it's his fault. Uh, it's his fault. That's what I tell everybody. Yeah. Um, every interview I do, he gets the credit for that. But we were in the studio one day, and, and I was singing background vocals for a friend. Yeah. And I made the comment to Kelly that I love this song. And he just said, well, why don't you record that on your next solo record? And I said, nope. I sing for the Isaacs. I have no desire to, to be a soloist. He said, you've never made a solo record? And I said, no. And so... Um, Nothing else was said about it. The only thing I mentioned was if I ever do one, I want to feature my guitar heroes and um, some of my friends. We were sitting that night at dinner after the session, and suddenly uh, Kelly looks up from the ch check stub, and he said, I'll see you April 17th at 11 o'clock at your brother's studio. Don't stand me up. And he said, we're starting your solo record. And that's how it happened. That's how it happened. Well, that's how it happened. Kelly, you did a good thing, brother. Thank you. Because it is amazing. And, I mean, this is an album... 
It would have been perfect if you'd have done it all by yourself, but you've got Dolly Parton, you've got Connie Smith and Marty Stewart, and you've got, I mean, some of the biggest names yeah. in music that collaborated with you on this. It's just phenomenal. Thank you. Thank I, you. I my just, first reaction was to get my Guitar Heroes because I'm highly influenced by all types of genres of music. And being a guitar lover, I wanted each song to feature a different guitar player so mm -hmm. you can hear how different they play yet so equally wonderful. And then as we were uh, putting the songs in different keys, I was like, oh, I need my friend to sing this song with me. And, you know, people will buy it for them, yeah. not me. So I'm, I'm in good shape. <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> Becky, they're buying it for you because I don't know of anybody that does not love you and your amazing family, some of the greatest voices in music today. Thank, Thank God he left you here. Yes. We Thank need you. Yes. And we're glad you're still with us. Thank God you. bless you. Hey, Keith Bilbrey, while Becky and her family get set to perform, would you tell our viewers how they can find out about this new album? And boy, do you ever want to get it. Be sure you do. Just go to Huckabee.tv to find links to Becky's brand new album and to catch her family's band, The Isaacs, on the road. Now, performing from her new album with her sister and husband, here is Becky Isaacs Bowman. <laughs>
I can't see 